Hi, welcome to the studio. I'm Lindy Witten and today I'm just going to talk about a couple of different things. People often ask me about the paper that I use, so today I thought I would demonstrate on a different sort of paper than I usually use. I click here, you'll go to a video on different papers, but this one is just a piece of matte board which I've then painted with Colourfix Primer. So you can get this in all sorts of colours. This is just a clear one, so I've first of all painted on some apricot kind of background colour and then put the clear primer over it. The primer makes the pastel stick to it, it's a gritty sort of thing. This one cost me about $13 Australian dollars quite a lot of years ago. It lasts a long time. So different sort of paper today, different surface than I usually done. It's a prepared surface by me. In here I've uh, got the pastels I'm going to use for the painting. Here is the reference photo I'm using and you can see it's a sunset. I don't think I've done any sunsets for you before and they're quite tricky to do but I'm just going to do a little one to quickly demonstrate that. And over here is just a piece of paper that I've already been playing with the pastel colours. One other thing I wanted to talk about quickly today was value. That's something that um, people sometimes struggle to understand and it's very important in your painting. In, I've chosen this painting because it's got such a big strong value shift from really really dark strong toned values to very light up here. So we want to get the whole range and in the middle there's sort of some mid-tones in the greys and the peachy colours. So over in my little pastel palette where I've got some rice to help clean the pastels off I've got the very dark value colours, the mid value colours and some more lighter to mid values and the very light here. When you're trying to decide what value to use or what colour to use it's probably more important to think about what value you're using and if you just squint your eyes up you'll find that all the darks look pretty much the same under squint, the same strength, the same value, the mid tones look about the same and the lights look about the same, these lights here. So I've split them up into sky, sea and so the darks of the land and the mid-tones of the sky and the lighter ones of the um, the, the sunset colours in the sky. Just got a little bit of uh, paper here to wipe my hands on as I need to. So let's get started. I'm just going to start by setting up the difference between the highest, strongest, darkest values and the lightest values. So I'm going to just go in here with the that land mass there. I'm just going to rough it in just by using a very dark pastel and rough in the land mass there. Over here there's a, a sort of a bit of land mass sticking out with a, a some sort of uh, tree thing there. And I'm just roughing it in because that's probably going to get smudged a bit when I do the sky just to give me an idea of the value shift in here. And then behind there there's a lighter one so I'm going for a lighter colour out of my palette here and that's the second headland out here. That's a little bit lighter so I'm just going to rough that in in a, a lighter value. It's more important to get your value right than your colour right. That value is pretty much the same value as the sky, clouds there and the water down there. So I'm just going to at this stage rough in that value through there as well. Roughing it in and roughing it in in the sky there. You can see that the peachy colour on the background is going to help me tremendously with setting up the painting. So now I've got those in. The very lightest part of the painting is up here. So I'm just putting in a really light colour around the edges there of the, the clouds. That's just going to be the base eventually for my... So now I've got the value shift in that painting very dark mid tones and very light and then there'll be other values that I'm putting in so I'm just going to now work a bit on the clouds there so I'm just choosing some more of these mid tones I've got some purpley colours there which I'm putting in and just bringing them in over there adding a bit of deeper tones down here values down here and because I've already split them up into my value grouping, it's, it makes it a bit easier to, to work it out. Do I care if I'm showing through some of those uh, uh, undercolours, of that peachy undercolour? 
not really. I'm just going to get that painting a little bang into my tray there just to get a little bit of the dust off. Now at this stage I can decide whether I'm going to blend that a little bit and I am just going to take the side of my finger and give it a little, little blend in the clouds there just to push the paint a little bit into the and I'm not pushing it too much I'm just blending it off a little to help. I'm also going to do that a little bit down here but I'm going to add in some of those blues. This is a night scene it's uh, on the Cinque Terre and we we just thought we'd catch the train in from where we were staying and then when we got uh, to the first little town it was just such a lovely evening we thought let's go for a walk and we walked all along here in the dark and it was just beautiful and very fortunate evening really. I've been there in the daytime I really enjoyed this evening one. Okay so now I'm going to go back into here and just strengthen up that headland putting in some other colours but all in the same sort of value so that I don't lose that value there but I'm, I'm adding in a little bit of interest by putting in some some different colours that was probably slightly and I'm not going to be too picky about the headland that sort of I quite like that purple and it just gives it a bit of a bit more interest okay so I've got the one headland in now I'm just going to go back into this headland and give that a bit of a rough go in there. I'm going to take some of that blue I just used. I'm not doing very well here am I? I'm just chucking the back in wherever I like and that's just not not very good. I'm just going to take some of that blue and put up here into there to the, the clouds and I'm also going to deepen up those clouds a bit at the top there. You can see they're a little, they're a little bit stronger in value than, than elsewhere in the painting. So we'll just make those clouds a little bit stronger in value over to there. I'm giving it one more tap over here just to get rid of some of the loose pastel dust and now I'm just going to establish at this point my very strong orange colour in there just so I don't and it's it's a very bright patch and within the bright patch there's a bit of a lighter patch there and I'm not sure that this is going to be the right colour but it might just work just to give it that bit of a glow. Now out along the edge here there's a little uh, little bit of lighter C there so I'm putting that in quite a light value a bit lighter than the headland and maybe it's just a wee bit too light but that's okay because I can come back in with a little bit of a darker colour over the top just a hint of the, the darker colour that's in the headland there and I'm actually going to put a little bit of that purple in the headland just for some variety too and to tie it in with the sky here I go again and going back in with the deeper blue that uh, far colour there I'm just going to smush with my finger just a little smush along there because it's quite smooth towards there and then there's a much lighter bit just going along there and in fact I'm going to take my my yellow and just rub that along there as, as well because it, it's a bit lighter than behind it and it's where it's starting to come down into these more orangey peachy colours so now I'm going to go in with the peach And around the headland here it's got darker again so I'm going back in with this dark colour around the headland and you can see I'm just skimming that across the surface which gives it a little hint of the darker colour amongst what's going to be the brighter colours as well so I'm skimming that across the surface and 
even though this is a very bright color that I used up here, because I've put that bluey color underneath it and lightly skimmed it across, when I skim across the orange, it doesn't retain all that brightness. And that's good because I didn't want it to be as bright as that very bright patch there. So there I'm, I'm getting that nice variation. I really need to go back up into here now. And you can see around the bottom edge of that cloud, it's a more peachy sort of colour before it actually comes into the, the really light colour. So I'm just adding some of that in around the edges. There's actually a patch of it up here peeping through too and so I'm going to pop that in. And that's a little bit more orange. I'm going to go back over it with the peachy colour. And then the top of the clouds are, are a little bit lighter too. They've sort of got a halo around them. So I'm kind of moderating that very light one a little bit. And I'm going to go back into there. There's a little bit of extra cloud coming across here. It's quite light, so I'm just doing a very light skim of the purple sort of colour across there and then I'm going to smoosh that with my finger very technical term smooshing and just around the edges of the clouds there too cleaning off my fingers a little bit as I go now I'm not really happy with the the, uh, the very lightest light there so I'm just going to go back in again and put that in again making it really bright. Part of the problem is it's picking up some of that very dark colour underneath and I may just give it a tiny spray with some fixative which is not something I usually do but in this case it would just restore that surface a bit and help me to get over the picking up some of that dark colour. I'm going to use the Spectra Fix, it's a Degar pastel fixative and I'm going to give it a little, little quick spray over there. This is a you can see it's darkening it. I just want to let it settle now uh, and dry, and then I'll go back over that again. I'm just going to add a bit of into it. It's a very, it's a more lemony sort of yellow, and that'll just give a little add, add a bit of vibrancy around those clouds there. And in here, and you can see it's going on much better now over that uh, where I've put the put the the, the um, fixative. So fixative has its has its place, even if I don't use it very much. It can be very useful for that kind of thing. I'm just moderating that again. So again, these are, are pretty much the same sort of values very light value and that's helping me get those colors. I'm putting in a more peachy color now which is sort of tying it through into the background there. Down at the edge here it gets a bit deeper so I'm just putting in a deeper sort of orangey color and then I'll go back in with that peachy color just knock it back slightly and back into the water here with the peachy colour and I'm going to go back in with that bright those bright spots of orange a little bit of it over the water here and you, you just get a lovely ripply effect there where that, that dark's gone on first and because I've got very uh, sandy gritty paper there. I'm going to take that a little bit back into there and I'm also going to go in with a little bit of purple there because it's, it's getting a little bit darker. Smooth that those bits of sun, sun's any colours out a little bit there in places. 
Now I'm back into that sky. I just need to give it a few little moderating colours there. Lighten it off a bit because that when I popped in the fixative it darkened it up a wee bit more than I wanted it to. So I'm just putting in some little bits of variation in the tonal values in the clouds just to make it slightly more interesting and back in here there's just a little touch of peach as well so I'm just So that is really the sunset. I'm going to pop in. I remember I said at the beginning I'd have to re-establish that. So here's that little landmass here and there's, there's some bits of vegetation. So they're going in with a very dark value. And then I'm just going to put that, that plant up there. And it's one of those big grass things with the, I don't know what they're called. I've got them in my own garden, but I don't know what they're called. And they just have very big seed heads after they flower on them. And that's what I'm just putting in there. And just a few indications of the, the foliage around the edge there. I'm putting that in with my deepest, darkest value. and just going in a little bit with a few spots of lighter and then some purpley colours that are in the headland. Just to give it a little bit of variety again. So there we have it. A quick sunset. Do you know when I look at it, it needs a bit more of the darker colours in along there. So always good to have a quick check when you think you're finished because you might not have really finished. And it's a little bit brighter around the edge there than I've allowed for too sort of halo effect around the clouds. So I'm just going to put those in. And I want to just re-establish that little touch of bright light in there. Give that a little smooth off. And maybe a touch of brighter colour up through there. So there we have the sunset and I've mixed up those values again but you can even see in here just looking down into the palette very dark against very light. Think about your values when you're painting and try and establish your darker values first against some lighter values so you know which range you're using and if you're choosing your palette before you paint then it's a good idea to separate them into the values so it's very easy when you think I need something light to just go in and get from your colour and value group the colour and the value that you need. Hope you've enjoyed that little demonstration and I look forward to seeing you next time in the studio. Bye for now.